So today, we will talk about the famous sports star. There are, is there anyone who can answer about a Korean sports star you know or like? Kim Yuna. 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 Like this, uh, there are many good outlets in Korea, and uh, they do their best to maintain not only their own honor but also their country to uh, as a member of the national team. Regardless of their ranking, the way they try so hard moves many people so deeply. Uh, you have probably experienced it all, all before. So today we we'll talk about Son Kijang. Who was a legendary figure in Korean marathon, but uh, there was a sad story behind that. So let's venture into the sad story of Korean marathon and welcome this speaker, Thomas uh, Brian B. Thomas, <laughs> with a big hand. Um, I've been coming to GIC for seven years. I've been doing presentations for six years. Um, this is going to be my last presentation because uh, I will be going back home in, in, um, in May 2012. My contract finishes, so I will return to my home. Although I am from Canada, I was born and I competed in the Olympics for Canada. I made enough money through sponsorships and so forth. So I bought a house in the Caribbean, so I've been living in the Caribbean since. 2000, because I hate the winter. I love the hot I love the leaves, it's my passion, but I can't stand the winter. So, um, after the 2000 se season, I went to Grenada, I retired at 30 years old, but then around 35, you know, Grenada is very small, 132 square miles, I became very bored. So I decided to use my degree, the degree I got at the University of Alabama. And I went back to work in Toronto, but at the time, I couldn't find a job there because it was in the middle of the semester and it was winter. So the opportunity to come to Korea um, was available. So I came in uh, 2005. And my goal was to just come for one year and then go, go back home. But seven years later, I'm still here. So without further ado, um, I'm going to start the presentation. It's, uh, I love sport. I'm all about sport. So I said... I would like to do a, a sports presentation before I left. So I hope you enjoy it. I put it together. It took me a little bit of time to put it together and research it. If you have a question anytime, uh, well, I guess we'll do the question period. So I was, was going to say shoot, but no problem. You know? Whatever. Okay, so that's the title. A lovely little Korean sports story, which begs the question, who is the most iconic, most influential Korean sports star? So that's a question I threw out there for you. What I'm going to do is just go through about a series of um, sports personalities who impacted Korea. And I tried to, these athletes have impacted Korea globally. That is why I chose them. I heard some names bantered around just before we started, but the reasons I picked these athletes, because these athletes put a face on Koreans globally, outside of Korea. Okay? Between 1910 and 1946, this is where my story kind of starts. It was a pretty um, dark time for Korea um, in many aspects, culturally, socially, right? And this is where I want to start. So, when this young athlete decided to take up the challenge to be uh, Olympian, he started in the dark, on his own, with no sponsorship, no, no big machine pushing him. This was just solely about an athlete and the love for his sport. Okay? So the darkness and the footsteps represents this young athlete training on his own. I run in the morning sometimes and during my training for the Olympics and so forth, it's very difficult when you train on your own and the lights and the cameras are not shining. <coughs> and sometimes I usually run around 5 in the morning in Kwangyong and it's very difficult. 
with running, after 5-10 minutes of just running, it's very difficult and the breath becomes very labored. So this is what maybe Song Ki Chung had to go through. And I picked this song because it's one of my favorite songs coming to Korea. And this song represents the light that he brought to a lot of Korean people between 1910 and 1946. So just for a few minutes we'll listen to it and then I'll, I'll rush through it because I'm on time. But it's a beautiful song.
the bad times that they had between each other through, throughout history. Forget about the football game. Right? And they look at the heroes on the field like Park Ji Sung and they expect him to be Ishu Shin and Slay, the Japanese. It's not about that, it's just a football game. <coughs> forget that. The first person I want to talk about today is in Korea there was a famous movie. Um, I, I'm sorry about his name, I can't pronounce his name correct. But uh, his name is Rikikazan? Rikikazan? Mm -hmm. Alright? His, his Korean name was Kim Shina. Why I start with him is because he was born in Korea, but at that time in Korea he had to leave Korea because there wasn't opportunities for many Koreans at that, that, at that time. But regardless of if he wanted to forget his Korean culture or not, it doesn't matter. He's Korean, he was born in Korea. But he had to go to Japan to make his, his bread or his money or his fame. He preferred to keep quiet for good reason. He left sumo for professional wrestling. He brought, in a sense, he brought professional wrestling to Japan because he failed as a sumo wrestler, but he saw a way of making money through the professional wrestling, which led to a little bit of empire and he was able to purchase some nightclubs in Japan. He played the virtuous Japanese being the villainous American, so he arranged it with the American wrestlers that they would dominate him for the first part of the match and then he'd come back in the end and be the victor. And they loved it, they ate it up. It's almost equivalent to Hulk Hogan in the 80s as the All-American. 1950, Rikiki became the most famous among Japanese as Hulk Hogan would be among Americans in the 1980s. His success enabled him to build a nightclub empire, but in 1963 he was stabbed by the Yakuza gangster, gangsters. During an era, professional wrestling, then as now, was less sport, more of entertainment. Okay? But I thought I would start with him. Why? Because, again, he put a face on the Korean people in a time of darkness. Next, I would like to talk about Cha Bong Kun. In 1978, a Korean footballer was picked up to play in the German Bundesliga. He was the first Korean to play the beautiful game at the highest levels. During that time, he was signed by Inrup Frankfurt and made him a member of the UEFA Cup. And in Germany, he was known as Che Bung because he had a tremendous shot. And he was the first Korean footballer to put a face on the Korean people. And not a marginal football player, he was a good football player. At the time he played football, he was only, he, he led the Bundesliga in scoring at the time when he played. He was a phenomenal player. And he was a main cog in the, in, on their team. He ended his career with Bayern Munich, one of the powerhouses in European football today. This was a time for Korea, it was a turning point time for Korea to get the, to get the Olympics. 80,000 spectators rose to cheer Song Ki Chang as he jogged into Jamil Olympic Stadium weeping with emotion. Um, commentators told the old hero story to those too young to remember. Song Ki, Song Ki Te and the Berlin Games. 1998 was South Korea's coming out party to the global world. In a sense, the 1988 opened the gates for a lot of um, economic industrialization and a lot of partners to America. And sport did it through the Olympics. Unlike 1984 and 1972, the, the Olympics there was no organized boycott. Korean athletes took home 12 gold, but no global star emerged. Koreans would have to wait until 1994. Like I said, there was many Koreans who did very well at the Olympics, but that crossover star it never emerged in 1988. Park Chan Ho. Baseball is Korea's top spectator sport, introduced by American missionary in the 19th century. Park Chan Ho was hired by the LA Dodgers in 1994, home of the largest Korean town in America. 
His home is in Gongju, in South Korea. He was the first Korean superstar of mainstream American sports, currently signed to the Japanese team Ornix, Buffalo. I had a discussion with uh, uh, my teachers. I have a teacher workshop. I work every Thursday at my school. And I had a discussion about different um, sports and sports personalities. And if I was talking to a young lady, maybe under the age of 20, and I asked, who is the most influential Korean sports star that you know or that you like? Most young ladies, excuse me, would say Kim Yuna. Okay? If you talk to young men, 20 and under, same. You ask them, who's the most influential global Korean superstar that you know or you like? The majority of them would say Park Ji Sung. Mm -hmm. If you talk to, for example, the teachers, I, there was um, eight women teachers, mid-30s. They identified with Park Seri. Okay? Uh, men, 30, 25, 30, 35. Park Channel. But most older gentlemen, uh, maybe 55, 60, they identify with Song Ki Chung. So, that's the next athlete I'm going to talk about briefly. Park Siri, 1997 disaster struck South Korea, leading to then the world record $58 billion bailout from the IMF. In 1998, the diminutive small, little or cute golfer Park Siri won the McDonald's LPGA Championship at the U.S. Women's Open. First for Koreans. Opening the door, opening the future doors, making Korean women the most noticeable and ethnic group in the LPGA. And today, if you look at the top 20 women golfers in the world, probably six to eight are Korean women. And that's a phenomenal achievement. And she broke the glass ceiling for a lot of the Korean women. Another major event. On the world scene, 2002 World Cup. If the 1988 Olympics had been Korea's coming out party, the 2002 World Cup was her walk down the aisle. South Korea was high-tech, sophisticated, self-confident. South Korea won many more international friends with their good-natured and enthusiastic crowds than co-host low-key Japanese. And then finally, we come to Park Ji Sung. Since 2005, debut at Manchester United, he is their most consistent playmaker on a star studded team. Famed for his stamina and work ethic, no off the field problems, which has plagued many of the Premier League players. Okay, like I said, if you ask most uh, young men, middle aged men, they identified with Park Ji Sung. Usually their games are around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. And you'll find probably about maybe 40 to 50 percent of young Korean men up at that hour watching the games. They don't miss it. The source of pride. It should be. Park Ji's a pretty good player. Best Asian to play in English football. Probably the most famous Korean sports star alive. At home, his popularity is massive. And like I said, if I took out Song Ki Chung at this point, he would probably be the most iconic right now. Why? Because I said, if, if I asked a young man in Africa, if I went to a small town in Africa, just choose one, throw a dart, and choose one town. I walked into that town, and I went into the local uh, coffee shop, or place of gathering in that town. And we start talking about a sport. Most likely we'd, we'd start talking about soccer. And most likely, Manchester United would come up. And most likely, his name would come up. And that is the difference between Song Kei Tong and Kim Yuna and a couple of other Korean global stars. It's because of the brand that he represents, Manchester United, which makes him very iconic. And the winning that they have done around the world Kim Yuna, 
picture perfect smile. Die for figure. World Junior Figure Skating Champion 2006. 2010 Winter Olympic Champion. Highest score in history. Current host of Kiss and Cry, prime time TV show. I, I work at an elementary school and all my female uh, students remind me of this show, Kiss and Cry. Please put it in. I said, okay. <laughs> Generous, charitable donations to many causes. She was the face of the Chung Olympic bid, committed to win the eighth hosting of the 2008 Winter Olympic Games. Korea will have hosted the world's three major sports events. Which comes to the last person I want to talk about. I got this quote from one of the teachers I was doing the workshop with. I asked him, he was around 58, and I asked him, what do you think about Song Ki Chung? He told me, Brian, he has the heart of a lion. I put that picture up there. He's my choice, the most iconic, most influential Korean sports star. Why? He was a shining light that led the Korean people out of a period of darkness. And it was dark. I talked to some of the older Koreans, maybe he was alive during that time, and it wasn't a happy period in Korea. And this young man, he brought a lot of light to a lot of darkness in people's lives at that time. With few possibilities for Koreans during 1910, 1945, it was a poor man with the heart of a lion. A grueling 26 mile race with a mass audience of one million people lying in the streets of Berlin who gave Korea's hope with a face. His victory at that time was then a world record. He was the first man to break the two and a half hour barrier. He ran two hours, 26 minutes. Born in the northwest town of Sinju, birth name so Song Ki Chung. At the time, he had no sponsorship deals or TV shows or commercials. No fanfare or expectation prior to leaving Korea for Berlin. He left as a runner with a dream and he returned as an icon. Most people, he, will, he was and always will be the first Korean global star. And, like the young man said in the opening, it was a sad, it was a sad story for Korea, but I don't think so. It's not sad because it's, it's, it's a legacy and it's still living. Like life, there's ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys. But in 1988, they remembered 80,000 people, 1,000 people came to their feet during the 1988 Seoul Olympics. Just this past summer, Korea had the IAAF World Championships. His face was plastered all over Daegu. Koreans don't forget and the world hasn't forgotten. During the time when he won the gold medal at the 1936 Olympics, he had to wear the Japanese uh, flag. And he covered it with a oak tree plant. And What's beautiful is that plant is now a tree in Seoul. You can actually walk by it. They have a monument of that oak tree that he had in front of his heart. And it didn't matter what type of uniform it is that he wore. Today, many stars wear Nike and Adidas and God knows what. But the heart of a champion is in, is in your heart. It's not on your... It's not on your sleeve or the brands you wear or the, 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 the sponsorships that you, you try to promote. It's from within that makes a good athlete. And ultimately, he's also a very nice person too. Alright. Thank you. Also, thank you to Mr. Hong for his big help. I'm <laughs> Mr. Hong is a is a fourth grade teacher at my school, young guy. He's very good with computers, and he helped me out 
immensely, which I'm, I'm very grateful. So uh, I want to leave it there. I don't want to babble on too much about different things. I want to keep it on point. So at this point now, I'm sure they're going to get the questions together. And uh, I'll be happy to answer the questions. Oh, I don't have any Please take a few minutes here. Yeah, go ahead. Well, let's just thank Brian again for giving this awesome talk. It was a nice topic for everyone to learn about, especially I think a lot of foreigners maybe don't really have a chance to sure. learn this kind of history of Korea, so sure. it was really great. And so, so everyone, um, you may have gotten a sheet of paper when you came in, and if you didn't, you can grab one from one of the volunteers. So please write your question down, pass it back to the volunteers, and we will read. So I have some questions already to start us. Um, so let's say the first one. Uh, when you were researching this topic, did you learn about any other athletes who faced similar situations um, as the first Korean global star did, like who had to um, compete under the flag of another nation or anything like that? Well, what's interesting in this, uh, it's a good question. I guess that person is tested me because there was also a gentleman from Sunchan Mm. Right, who was on the podium in 1936, who had to wear the Korean, um, the Japanese flag also. But the reason I didn't mention him is because Song Kei Kwan was the first, and sometimes the first, you know, they they lead the way. But there was two Koreans on that podium uh, in 1936, and subsequently there was many other Korean athletes that had to suffer under uh, the Japanese occupation at that time who competed, who competed. But I chose him because he was the first. But like I said, I was from Sun China and I was coming up to do the talk and someone had mentioned to me that there's a park and there's something else. Um, the guy who finished <coughs> second is from Sun China, was from Sun China. And uh, I'm admitted to, to, to remember his name, but I was, I was made aware of that. Uh, yes. Excuse me. Well, you are saying that the uh, Korean darkness uh, from 1910 to 1946, you mean the, uh, the period of Japanese Korean rule? If you mean that, it's actually you know, the, uh, from 1910 to 1945, not 1946. Okay, I'm one year off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because the, you know, this is a historical. Uh, no, no, absolutely, so absolutely. It, it should be quiet. Yeah, thank the, you. At the end of the World War II. Thank you, that's right. So let's go Thank back. You. So maybe um, next to the future. Um, so do you have any ideas? Um, have you heard about any maybe new stars that could be the next global players in Korea? Yeah, there's a few. There's a guy that left who I was tutoring uh, for the past three years. His name is John D. Uh, uh, it skips my name. It skips my my uh, John uh, Dongji Dongji Dong. The guy who plays for Sutherland. What's his name? Yeah, no. He plays for Sunderland. Sunderland. Yeah, Sunderland. John Ji Dong. Anyway, he plays for Sutherland now, but he was a Chinam Dragon player. And I, I was I tutored him for three years. That's embarrassing that I forgot his name right now. Dong Ji Dong Ji Yong. But he's played for Sutherland right now. She has a one. She don't want that that's right. Ji Dong one. Sorry. He plays for Sutherland now. And he has a chance to be. Also um, I really believe that Zhang Mi Ran has a chance too because she's doing some incredible things. Every time she's at the Olympics, she breaks a world record and she is starting to be a crossover herself. And, you know, obviously you got, you got the footballers, always have footballers, you know, Ki Song Young, Yi Chon Young, you know, um, uh, Che Bong Sun, um, uh, Cha Do Lee. So there's, there's, there's a few. And obviously you got the golfers, the golfers right now. There's a, a young lady who just won a couple weeks ago, a, a big a competition, very young. So they're coming. They're coming. Okay, great. And um, so I have another question. Um, so what was it exactly about um, like Korean athletes and the sports, the history of Korea that made you choose this topic? Well, I'm an Olympian. I'm, I'm a sportsman and I identify with it because, because uh, behind the glitz and the glory there's actually hard work that has to be done to be an athlete. We always look at the finished product, mm -hmm. but if I, re I read Park Ji Sung's story, his was no picnic either. It was very difficult himself. Most of these guys are very difficult. Ki Sung Young, a lot of people don't know, 
but um, he's from Oño, which is a, in the area that I, I live in. And he didn't come from any rich family either. He had to work to where he is today with Celtics. So part of being an athlete is like, most people see the finished product when you're on the sponsorships and when you're on TV and you're doing random commercials and playing the fool. But there is an actual side that no one sees that you have to work very hard to, to achieve that. So I just wanted to bring that to the forefront, especially with um, Song Kei Tong's case. He did a lot of training, very difficult running like that and preparing for something like that. And so in that campaign, um, would you be able to talk a little bit more about your Olympic career? Well, I was, uh, I competed in 1988 in uh, Seoul, I saw him, and um, I didn't win any medals. Carl Lewis won the long jump that year, I finished 14th, not great, but uh, you know, I, I competed again in 1996. I was a long jumper for Canada, and my best jump ever was 8 meters 32. It's about 27 and a half feet. And uh, three time All American at the University of Alabama before that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty great. Okay. Yeah, definitely, I think. Um, so I have one more question sure. similar to that. So um, just asking about when you are competing personally. So, how do you overcome, say, the difficult moment like of you know competing in such a global event like the Olympics? Well, it's all, all in the training. It's almost like studying English. When you go to do an English test, a toy test, or, or whatever, anyone gets nervous in the test. The only reason people get nervous is because they're not prepared. If you prepare, right, it's almost like a joyous event. It's easy. You just run through it, you're successful. It's even like the bar exam. So everyone complains about the bar exam. It's so difficult. If you prepare for it, and you go, you sit down, you just knock it out. It's just like some of my students. They come to the test, they're never nervous. They come in, they're prepared, they do it. The same with the Olympics, it's the same in life. You prepare, you come, you, you, you do your best, and you leave it there. Most people who are not prepared are the ones that are nervous and get everybody else crazy and nervous. Because they're not prepared. So they try to bring you down. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're going to end the question and answer period there. So if your question didn't get asked, um, if you'd like to ask Brian personally after the talk, come and say hi. <laughs> All right, I just want to read one more line before we I, 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 I forgot to read this line. But this is, um, Song Ki Tong said this after his, his win in 1936. He said, the human body can do so much, Song, Song said later. Then your heart and spirit must take over and his heart and spirit carried him up the final slope and over the finish line first. And that's what, that's a good ode to life. And I'd like to leave it there. Thank you.